Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my guide for the Battle in the Big Keep, the final fight in the Hildebrand story arc for patch 2.5. This fight will be unlocked through the Hildebrand storyline and requires a minimum item level of 90 to enter. This trial is broken up into two separate fights, both of which aren't too difficult. If you'd like to skip right to the second fight, you can use the index in the top left of the video. The first fight will put you up against Gilgamesh and his partner Enkidu, the big one this time. For this fight, just focus all of your damage onto Enkidu, since any damage done to Gilgamesh will just be healed up. Have each tank take one and hold it wherever. For the most part, the fight just requires you to dodge a lot of AoEs, and there's a few mechanics here that are simple. Enkidu occasionally uses some other attacks such as Arrow 2, which just does some damage in an AoE around random players. His most annoying attack is Web, which will target 2 or 3 players and slow their movement speed and attack speed. You're just going to have to Asuna or Leeches whoever's affected by Web. He also sometimes marks a player with a crosshair and shoots missiles at them. This player just needs to stand away from others in order to avoid the splash damage. When Gilgamesh runs to the center of the room and knocks everyone back, he is also going to start tethering people together. The two players tethered to each other will have mini cast on them, and to break the mini, they just have to run next to each other. The only other major mechanic is when Gilgamesh turns players into chickens. These players can run around, but they can't attack. Anyone turned into a chicken should be on the lookout for the mini tornadoes around the room. You'll want chicken players to run into these in order to prevent the room from filling up. If a non-chicken player hits one of them, it'll do about 4k damage, so just try to avoid them if you're not a chicken. Other than that, just keep damaging Enkidu until he's dead. When this happens, Gilgamesh will flee from the fight. Approaching him in the keep will reveal his true form and thus begins the second battle. This second fight isn't much more difficult than the first, though there can be some large AoE damage at times. At the start of the fight, Gilgamesh will just use a few AoEs and cleave attacks. As his HP falls though, he begins using room-wide AoEs with various patterns, as seen here, that just need to be avoided. He'll also use an unavoidable AoE that does about 2000 damage to the group, just heal it up. After he falls to 90% HP, he'll also begin enchaining people. This attack will target one of the healers, bind them, and cause them to take damage over time. The group needs to kill the chain around the healer before it kills them. Now if Gilgamesh is too close to the chained player, the chain itself will take less damage, so just ensure this doesn't happen. Another attack he'll start using often is Sword Dance, which hits multiple times in front of him. The main tank can just walk behind Gilgamesh when he starts using this attack to avoid it completely. Now, honestly, even if you do take every hit, it's not difficult to survive. The last attack players need to start watching out for is Masamune. Gilgamesh will Giga Jump to a member out of melee range for about 2000 damage before dashing back to the main tank. Anyone in his path will take about 3,000 damage, so just have the main tank stand still and have everyone else move out of Gilgamesh's way. At 70%, Gilgamesh will summon four dragon heads around the arena. These heads will just float around and do some AoE attacks on occasion. However, if any of the heads are alive after 50 seconds has passed, they will do a raid-wide unavoidable AoE. The damage of this AoE varies with how many heads were alive. Now, as long as at least one head is dead, this attack won't instantly kill the group. So confident groups can just kill one head and then refocus onto Gilgamesh to get the fight done quicker. Duty finder groups with less confidence may want to consider just trying to focus down all four heads. Gilgamesh is also going to summon a bunch of lightning orbs in the room that explode for AoE damage after a short delay. He's either going to summon these in the center of the room and then the outside, or the outside of the room first and then the center. Just be wary of them when they appear and dodge the AoEs. Once under 40% HP, Gilgamesh will begin comboing his attacks together more. This includes doing all three of his room-wide AoEs back to back to back, though just as before you can avoid them for the most part. He'll also summon another set of Dragon Heads, which you really want to try and bring down this time. When this set of Dragon Heads disappears, Gilgamesh will also do his combo attack, which can really hurt when coupled with the Dragon AoE if healers aren't prepared for it. However, once you've passed this set of Heads, just keep dealing with all his attacks and you'll win in no time. This fight drops a single minion, Enkidu, the little chicken. Thanks for watching this guide. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and check out the rest of my channel for more Final Fantasy XIV videos and some other stuff. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.